Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest on Storm Evert as it moves out into the North Sea. It still has some heavy rain and some strong winds with it so we still need to keep an eye over the, over the course of this evening. But generally the strongest winds and the heaviest rain is now cleared uh, so things are gradually going to be turning better from the west. We're also going to have a look at the longer range forecast, so it does look like we're going to be bringing in northerly winds which are going to send things pretty chilly for this time of year. But do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, links in the description. Now we've had some very lively conditions today with Storm Everett which centre is now out in the North Sea, it's now getting out of radar um, sort of uh, range. So we're starting to see the showers around the center of the low starting to fade away and disappear off radar. But we still have some outer bands of the storm coming in, spiraling in off the North Sea. We still have some very heavy rain over northern England. Now today we have seen some very strong winds. Around 70 miles an hour gusts have been, for, have been seen across the south coast. We saw some very heavy rain across central areas. We even saw some thunderstorms across northeastern areas. And there still is a thunderstorm warning in uh, force right now, but I don't suspect there will be too many thunderstorms left in the remaining hours of the warning. But luckily though, um, with this low pressure system, with the very strong winds, a lot of the showery bands did move through very quickly. Um, I was outside today and one minute is quite nice blue skies, some dark clouds in the, in the, in the background, and then give it five minutes um, and those dark clouds are over the top of you sideways rain, um, blustery winds, um, completely um, visibility dropping uh, massively, and then you get a five or ten minute shower, very heavy shower of course, um, and then it's clear again. So it is. it was very, very on and off today, um, and there, I do suspect there was some damage around, and I, uh, I do hope if you have been affected by the storm, um, I hope it wasn't too bad and I hope you do stay safe over the last sort of remaining hours of this storm. But you can see it is clearing off the North Sea at the moment. We do have still have a smackering of showers around and there still will be some more showers in the east as the storm very slowly moves north eastwards, but it does become less intense as it does. If we do have a look at the Met Office radar, now this is from six hours ago and you can see the amazing sort of structure we had around this storm with its spiral um, coming out of the centre, as the centre was just to the north of London at this point, it came all the way from Bristol across to London. You can see the very heavy showers coming on around its north and its southern flank. Around its north flank, we did see more persistent rain at points, and along its southern flank, you can see these really heavy showers, but again, moving through, as I said, very quickly, five-minute showers, but sort of um, low visibility, sideways rain when you are in those showers. To the north, though, you can see these purple uh, and pink colours and a few white specks as well where we did see a few thunderstorms take off in the northeast. Now they weren't completely um, sort of a classic summer thunderstorm where we saw vicious lightning, hail, but very heavy rain, some high rainfall totals um, and we did see uh, some flashes of lightning as well within it but you can see a lot of showers around and some amazing structure to this storm, but it's now clearing away, and those winds will slowly be dying down over the course of the next few hours. If we do go back to the radar for a second, and we do have a look at the latest on the uh, rainfall uh, of the last 24 hours, it does give us a good perspective of where we did see the heaviest rain today. So you can see across many central and southern areas, we did see uh, quite a bit of rain. Um, a good sort of 6 to 12 millimetres, so about a quarter to half an inch of rain. But to the north, we saw more persistent rain towards the Midlands. We saw a few areas seeing more than that, maybe 30 or 40 millimetres. And in those areas that saw those thunderstorms up to 60 millimetres, as those thunderstorms were quite stationary as they were right on the outer bands. The winds were much faster and the showers were uh, moving much uh, much more quickly towards the centre of the storm on the outer bands, it was moving slower. So that's why these thunderstorms did dump a lot of rain in these small localised areas towards the northeast, in sort of Yorkshire, um, in Lincolnshire as well. So we have seen some very, very severe effects, and I do suspect the naming of this storm, it was sufficient, the impacts we have seen, um, and those yellow and amber warnings um, were sufficient as well. So 
kudos to the Met Office for that. It doesn't. It does seem like they were very warranted warnings, and um, we have seen some very severe conditions today. If we now have a look at the uh, weather warnings, we did have get a thunderstorm warning in the northeast today, and that is where we saw those thunderstorms, as I saw, or, or as we saw on the radar uh, a few minutes ago. It does expire in a couple hours' time, and I don't suspect there will be any more thunderstorms this evening, but uh, just for the ch odd chance that another thunderstorm does develop this evening. Heavy showers and thunderstorms will develop uh, with 20 to 40 millimetres, and potentially up to 70 millimetres, and as we saw by that radar estimate, that's pretty accurate. We did see around 60 or 70 millimetres in those uh, those sort of core spots where those thunderstorms did stationary. So uh, a decent warning there from the Met Office, um, warranted warning, of course. Um, so yeah, we did, we did, we have seen some, uh, quite, quite some severe effects from this heavy rain, blustery winds and thunderstorms. So very interesting system we saw today. Um, and it doesn't look like this, it does look like this unsettled weather is going to be continuing. So if we now have a look at the GFS, you can see Storm Everett at the moment clearing. So this is 12 o'clock this afternoon and by midnight, it's out in the North Sea, filling in a little bit. So its intensity is dropping and we do bring down northerly winds which is going to bring things a little bit colder indeed so by saturday midday we've got northerly winds in initially the upper air conditions are not too cold but to the north that you can see the zero degree ice firm is moving through into northern scotland and it could turn, turn things a little bit chilly um for a time across northern scotland it does look like although uh, we are bringing northerly winds the air mass of course, it isn't going to be that cold. It is end of July, early August, so the air mass is not going to be that cold. But on the surface, we could see temperatures struggling into the low to mid-teens in Scotland and only mid to high teens, potentially, in England, Wales and Ireland as well. So, yeah, pretty chilly for this time of year where we would generally be morning temperatures in the mid to high 20s. Beyond that, we do see westerly winds take over again. High pressure to the south, um, but at the same time, we do see uh, low pressure spiraling up again. And interestingly, uh, I've seen th this on Twitter today as well. There's the chance that we do see another storm next week spin up. And you can see there, there's the potential of another named storm next week. Um, so... It's looking very, very unsettled, very active jet stream for this time of year, and we really need to keep an eye on this next week. Now, it's only the possibility, but there is a chance we see another named storm on a similar track to Storm Everett um, that we've seen today. If we do have a look at the uh, pressure charts, um, sort of zoomed in, you can see um, it's quite deep area low pressure, 994 millibars, and if we do go in... A little bit more you do see it does start to fill in as it crosses the uk so not quite as intense as it does cross the uk as storm Everett was but still nonetheless could have very strong winds across it so we have to keep an eye on that could be another named storm of course beyond that we see another air flow pressure sweep across the north and generally westerly winds bringing in bands of rain heavy showers and strong westerly winds so not looking too pleasant and we're getting more beyond 240 hours now so, so towards the uncertain time frame by the 10th of august more westerly winds towards the south we have got ridges of high pressure trying to build in so things could look a little bit drier at points but generally it's looking very very unsettled for the foreseeable future right towards the end of the run at 384 hours we are building in high pressure which could start to turn things a lot hotter where we start to see temperatures get up into the high 20s if not getting towards 30 degrees, but this is a long time in the future, and I suspect at the moment it's not got any support with it um, on the ensemble, so we'll just have to keep an eye on that towards the longer term. So if we do have a look at the ECMWF, see if that does spin up a similar storm next week, you see those northerly winds come in, brief ridge of high pressure, for low pressure does spin up, and by next week we do see that similar system develop. Now, dissimilar to Storm Everett, it actually spins up out in the Atlantic, whereas Storm Everett um, spun up just to the south of Ireland. So it rapidly deepened as it approached the UK, whereas this storm deepens out in the Atlantic and sort of fills in uh, as it reaches the UK. So 
it'll be interesting to see how how much this storm does hold on to its strength or this low pressure system hold on to its strength if it does hold on to its strength sufficiently as it heads towards the southwest that is when we could see it being named so we'll have to really keep an eye on this next week but it's something we're going to be keeping a very firm eye on through our next few uh, videos beyond that again generally westerly winds and another deep air of low pressure again the potential for a named storm if it does come off but it does look like those isobars are a little bit more spread out on that uh, area of low pressure and it does move through northwards and fill in quite quickly and as we are towards 284 hours westerly winds are taking over with low pressure centered over scotland so not looking great at all if we now have a look at the gfs ensembles you can see temperatures are going to be around or below average for the foreseeable future. So really not looking great for hot and dry weather fans. You can see those northerly winds come in in the next few days. Temperatures dipped around 3 or 4 degrees below average, around 5 degrees 850 HPA, which wouldn't look out of place in sort of autumn or winter for 850 HPA temperatures. Really chilly there. Beyond that, temperatures remain a degree or two below average, so we could still see 20 degrees here or there in a few areas in the south, but generally temperatures in the mid to high teens. Beyond that, as we head to right towards sort of the middle third of August, you do see the precipitation signal does start to lessen a tad, and the temperatures start to rise a little bit, so potentially we're seeing the first signs of some higher pressure building in with some warmer conditions, but at this stage, it's too too uh, far away really to say for certain it could just be some outliers skewing the data a little bit so we'll really just have to keep an eye on that long term but in the short term the next seven to ten days it's not looking great at all for anyone after some dry weather and some heat if we do have a look at the two meter temperatures as i said temperatures are going to be potentially around 20 to 21 degrees in the odd few days but generally mid to high teens um, around uh, around in the daytime and further northwards towards exposed coasts, potentially even cooler than, than that, especially in the west where we have the wind coming off the Atlantic. So, as I said, yeah, temperatures not looking too great. As I said, towards the end of the run, there are a few ensemble members going very hot, around 30 degrees or so. But again, as I said, it's probably just a few outliers skewing the data a little bit. So, I don't suspect we need to look at that too much at this stage. If it does come sort of into the 10 day time frame, if we start seeing it come up in the middle of these ensemble runs, then we'll probably start taking notice of it a little bit more. But at this stage, I really would discount it. If we finally have a look at the UK Met Office uh, precipitation rate, we'll just look at the next few days just to keep an eye on what precipitation is going to be doing. Storm effort is clearing over course this evening, but still some of its outer bands and heavy showers coming in off the east, and still a smacker of showers further west, as we do have westerly wind, of course. Through tomorrow, you can see more showers outbreak in the south. Again, the potential for some heavy and maybe thundery showers. But again, not a massive signal for that at this stage. Uh, uh, not a massive signal for thunderstorms at this stage. Just a few heavy showers, potentially. And again, through Saturday, things stunning clear through the evening. Again, still showers around. And as that northerly wind comes in, you see, again, more showers across uh, the south on Sunday. But as the northerly wind takes over, you can see generally, because it's coming from a... A drier location in from the north less moist air things are looking generally dry there still will of course be a few showers around especially further northwards and further eastwards but things are generally looking a little bit drier for many areas before the middle of the week westerly winds start coming in and we start to see low pressure take hold and i suspect if we could run this on another few at uh, another day or two we'd start to see that potential named storm starting to come up from the southwest and we'll really have to keep an eye on that over the next few days so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon